your company here on GXP today, live on Dubai One. Great to have you on board. Uh, and we'll continue our conversation about all things uh, serial entrepreneurism. Got another one alongside us, serial <laughs> entrepreneur that is. Looking forward to this chat. eMovers is a well-known brand here in the group. It's now turned, no, in the uh, country, I should say. It's now become a group, the eMovers group. And the co-founder uh, is, of course, Chirinton Joshi, or CJ. As the, as the entrepreneurial <laughs> world knows him. CJ, good to see you as always. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Listen, let's talk building blocks if we can, because, yeah, w there we were talking about, you know, that idea. Everyone has an idea, an idea that, that's, that, that is a solution to a problem out there. But do you, do you start off small and then become big, or does it, do they all need to be part of the sort of building blocks of building uh, a company and everything that goes with that company? It's a good question. <coughs> what my experience has been is uh, when you start your journey, you have no idea yeah. where you are heading to. So you start small, you are only looking at few blocks that you are aware of or your past experience is, has given you. And then you start building those blocks together on the way you meet people who then guide you. So the opportunities that you meet on the way and the people that you meet on the way then you start building the overall picture together. But so those, those blocks are the individual part of the ecosystem? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about the ecosystem, because Hashim mentioned earlier about how this, the entrepreneurship kind of ecosystem in Dubai of people that are starting different businesses are very welcoming, they're very open, they'll definitely guide you along your journey. So how hard was it for both of you um, to find the right people that guided you along your journeys? Um, I, I was lucky. Yeah. I met some really good people on the way. Okay. Uh, it also depends on uh, whether you're open to ideas, open to conversations, mm. whether people trust you because the more uh, you're vulnerable, people start trusting you and they come out and start guiding you. Mm. So I have been lucky that I met the right people at the right time in my life. So from my experience, I don't think if you're open, if you're ready to work hard, you meet the right people at the right time. Mm. Now, CJ, just to get some practical advice, because I think a lot of people hear about entrepreneurs here and they're like, oh, they've got tons of money to invest and to risk. But you said you started and you had a 4,000 dirham salary, which I was amazed by. And now look at you reinvesting all the money you earn into your portfolio of brands. So what advice do you have for people who want to start out and are worried about risking what little they have? Um, I started with 4,000 dirham salary, as you know. So uh, usually when you, are, when you have a less, less risk appetite and you have less money, then I always advise that start small. Mm. So I got into the moving business because there were low entry barriers. Initial investment wasn't required. I could subcontract uh, some of the stuff that I wanted to do. Mainly what I was giving was time and energy. And I think my advice to people is if you don't have money, if you have less risk taking abilities, then at least you give your time and energy. Because time, energy, and cash, these three resources, you're always falling short. Mm. If, if you can give your time and energy, then you find the people, you find the money, you find the opportunities, and the whole uh, jigsaw mm. puzzle starts fixing together. I respect that. Hashim, what do you think? Well, c congratulations on your success. I mean, starting with 4,000 dirham, that's honestly quite a feat. It's like the Dubai dream, what you mentioned earlier. I have a question for you. I mean, looking at the series of businesses you started, it seems that you address specific pain points. Mm -hmm. And from my own experience uh, in F&B and in other businesses, when you have a point point that you're addressing, that's a very good place to start because that becomes your North Star, essentially. Is that the case? Can you walk us through that a little bit? Yeah, definitely, and thank you for asking that. So when I decided to get into the moving line, um, I don't know whether you guys re have read a book called Blue Ocean Strategy. So you yeah. look for blue ocean because where, where all your competitors are, that's a bloody ocean. That means you're catching the same fish that they are catching, so you can't sell it even a dollar higher. But the moment you go to the blue ocean and either introduce a new target market or... Uh, so what was a specific pain point for e yes. So for us, um, we focused on furniture installation services, which mm. earlier moving companies weren't doing. Mm. I think that gave us the initial setup and that accelerated the whole process because we could get that little extra money uh, because nobody was offering that services. We could bring that sector into organized sector by uh, controlling it uh, via a moving company. And it was our blue ocean that mm. es he helped us establish. Mm. So talk to me about people, because you mentioned earlier about you know the, the, the right people around you, the right people to guide you, the mentors that was mentioned a little bit earlier on as well. 
it, you might have a creative mind and you might see that, that, that gap in the market and say, look, we need uh, e-movers to fill that gap in the market, but it's not your, it's not your bailiwick, it's not your speciality. So do you bring people with those special um, talents into the workforce to work with you? Uh, we do, but it's always not easy to find those people or you may not have the budgets to find the right people to initially join with you. Mm. So now maybe we can afford to have those people, but initially I think the founder really has to be jack of all trades. Yeah. He has to put in the time and the energy that is required. Even if a new market trend needs to be learned, then it needs to be learned. I mean, at the beginning, Tom, you do everything. You do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, to see this point. And then because you've done everything yourself, and as the company grows, and if you're successful, you're able to hire, but you still understand mm. what those people are hired to do. Yeah. If you don't, I don't know, CJ, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it becomes very difficult. Mm. Yeah. Like, I don't think you can start a business and be sort of big picture from the beginning. So you want to know every part of the business. You have to get your hands dirty, but then you also have to know where to step back a bit as you're growing and let, as you said, experts come in. Yeah. And that's a difficult point. You see some companies that do very well, but the founders stay very close to their baby they can let go, and as a result, it's not growing as fast as it could have mm. because they miss opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what I did, I'll uh, like to share here is, uh, initially I was the chairman and the doorman. As <laughs> the, <laughs> the, yes, the chairman to well doorman. <laughs> but as the business was growing, I created this imaginary organization chart. And everywhere it was CJ, 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 CJ. So I had 10, 12 positions. Over the period, consciously, I decided to replace myself from one, then two, then three, and fourth, and then said, what am I good at? Then I'm left now only with the marketing position. The rest mm -hmm. all has been delegated. Mm. So I think it's a good start to have that imaginary organization chart and start replacing yourself from that organization. Please chart. commit. You've still got that chart. <laughs> <laughs> he has it framed, huh? So are you now primarily focusing on business development? Are you sort of the spokesperson for the brand? So is that I'm, the main role? I am now only focusing on, so we have six different brands yeah. and I'm focusing on the long-term vision of the brand. Everything else is delegated. Yeah. Thank you so much, CJ, for all your amazing advice and also congratulations on all your success. Very much deserved. Now, Fadis went down to Ripe Market and I will say one of my favorite things about Ripe Market is discovering all the local homegrown businesses and all the budding entrepreneurs and supporting them myself. So let's see who he discovered today. Yes, I'm here at the Right Market, which promotes local businesses across Dubai. And I'm going to be speaking to some very impressive people who founded their companies right here in the UAE and have been working with the Right Market for several years. Let's meet them. It's time for some dessert, and I'm here at House of Ops with the founder, Marcella, right here with me. So what made you think I'm going to start a business with Hopsicles? Well, actually, it was me and my partner. He was managing the ice cream business for a multinational. And I have a hospitality background, culinary arts background. And we saw that there was nothing refreshing in the market. You know, everything is very heavy on indulgence. And Dubai is summer, here all year round. So why not give it a shot to, to a healthy concept? I mean, this is absolutely delicious and refreshing. And it doesn't taste like there's any sugar in here. Well, we don't use... Uh, refined sugar we use organic agave to sweeten the pops they're allergen free soy free they're free plant-based so we're spreading natural happiness for everyone incredible and you have the right market to thank for that yeah 100 percent. marcella thank you so much this was very much needed thank you cheers our next stop is all about fashion and i'm here with the founder of limited dxb mahindra so, Mahindra, tell me, first of all, what do you sell here? I see a lot of shirts. What other kind of clothes do you sell? So, we sell a whole in the Dubai lifestyle, which is very relaxed. Summer, you resort wear. is actually, if you go on holidays, you want to think about limited DXP. Um, everything is handmade. So, we have a shirt, full wardrobe. You can think of trousers, shorts, um, oversized shirts, um, all handmade, all relaxed fit. And, and you can tell this is definitely the place for me because I noticed a lot of similarities. <laughs> That's what it's really nice on you, yeah, because you're wearing similar style. Exactly. I know this is, yeah, your third year with the Right Yeah, Market. Yeah. What has made it so special? Why is Right Market so special, special for you and your business? <laughs> so this business is all about small local business and Ripe is a perfect opportunity to give us like this opportunity for all the small businesses who want to grow, who want to build their business, who want to meet the customer in person. 
and that's why I'm here at the Ripe Markets. Mandra, it looks absolutely amazing. I'm definitely gonna have to do some shopping. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for passing by. And now it's all about beauty and well-being. Do you think that's accurate, Deepak? Is the right word. Well-being because we're a therapeutic company. Yes, we are here at Sante with Deepak, who is one of the founders, and you founded this with your wife. You're talking my wife, Mamini, who is a Reiki master, a reflexologist, a aromatherapist, and a sound healer. Amazing. And I know that you've been with Ripe Market for eight years. Can you tell me a little bit about the journey and why you chose Ripe Market? Thanks to Ripe, we have actually grown in substance and size and length and width of the product line. There's nothing more I can say, except that today we probably have 1,000 plus clients. Thank you for Ripe. This is a tonic, which is a leave-on tonic. You need to wash it, take about half an ampule, half an ampule, apply it on the scalp, lightly massage it and leave it on. It will dry in a second. What does it do? It strengthens the scalp. It uh, makes your hair look amazing. Plus, it reduces significantly your hair fall and as well as induces growth. Well, so it does everything. There's definitely no time to waste. Make sure you come check it out right here at the right market. Thank you, Deepak. My pleasure. Well, it's been a fascinating day. I spoke to some very impressive people and I even picked up myself some goodies. You definitely need to check out the right market while you can and while the weather is so nice. Love the right market, an absolute Dubai staple in the city. Get yourselves down there. Now, after the break, we will be speaking to an international serial entrepreneur and Wi-Fi are closing out the show. Stay tuned.